custom chessboard project utilizes a grid layout to create the squares of a chessboard as well as to hold the other controls. So the entire page is a grid layout, which works out really well for the chessboard squares. Each square is an image button, and that allows us to have a background color for the image button, but to also have an image source, which will be the various chess pieces that we can show or hide with the buttons for setup pieces and clear board. We'll use some RGB sliders to create a color swatch and then apply that color swatch either to all the light squares or the dark squares. So in a chessboard layout, the, the right side bottom corner is a light square on both sides. For the chess pieces, the queen always goes on its own color and the chess pieces mirror the black and white sides. In the assignment instructions, I give you a few tips. We'll talk about the layout here in a minute. I used a box view to provide a simple four DUI unit around the chessboard. There's a box view behind the image buttons. And then I used arrays for each of the squares, both the light squares and the dark squares, and then all the squares which we can use to place the pieces. Let me show you the project running. Here's our Android emulator. I'm going to run, or run. There's the splash screen. And our project on the Android side, I can create a color Set all the light squares that color, and then I can create a darker color. And set all the dark squares that color. We can set up our pieces, or we can clear the board. Here's the same project on the iOS simulator. There's my icon, I'm gonna click that, and there's the project running. on the iOS simulator. Let's take a look at the grid layout. Here's our grid layout storyboard with 12 rows and 12 columns. The first, row zero, has a height of 50. It's gonna contain the title of custom chessboard. Then we have a very thin row, which is four units high, as is row 10. And then column one and 10 are also four units wide. That's going to contain the border of our chessboard, just a very thin border. And then rows two through nine and columns two through nine will contain the squares of our chessboard. Now, in the comments, you'll see that I have row eight as that first row because when we do chess notation, row one is always at the bottom and row eight is at the top. So don't let that throw you in the comments. On the columns, Left and right, as far as column zero and column 11, I just set that equal to an asterisk. It'll center everything horizontally. And then row 11 is set to auto. It's gonna contain everything that's not already specified in terms of sizes. So it's gonna be the basically the remainder of the bottom. And in that we'll use a stack layout to do our RGB sliders as well as four buttons, and then the copyright label. I'm going to give this a try on your own. I'm going to pause here and come back and show you my solution, both for the XAML and the C-sharp. I'm in Visual Studio for the Mac, and I started by bringing in all the images from the assets folder that I provided in Canvas. There are images for each of the black pieces and for each of the white pieces, also a transparent image that I will use for a blank square and that way we can we could use that in a game to make sure the square is is unoccupied. I also modified the app icon and app icon fig. There's also versions here that I saved out at underscore chess and if you use those versions um, I think I included all four in that assets folder. If you use those versions then make sure you change in your chessboard.cs project file the reference for the app icons and also for the splash screen. So let me just jump over and show you what those icons look like. 
in Adobe Illustrator. There's the splash.svg file. It's the same as the app iconfig file. And then for the app icon, I change the color. to a hexadecimal 0088BB. I often will find the shade that I like and this kind of modify a little bit so I'm getting double uh, digits for the red, the green, the blue. It makes it really easy to, to remember when I go to type it in. So back in Visual Studio then, you'll see the color I set as 0088BB, both for the app icon as well as for the splash screen. Make sure you set all of the images to a build action of Maui image. The app icon, whichever one you use, should be Maui icon. The app iconfig or app iconfig underscore chess would be none. And the splash would be Maui splash. I used the main page and modified the main page XAML. So let's take a look at that. I added a title, a custom chessboard, used a scroll view, and then a grid with a padding of zero, color, column spacing zero, and row spacing zero. Then we define our row definitions. So we saw that storyboard, follow that. The height is 50 on row zero. That's gonna be our, where our title goes. The next one is four, that's gonna be part of our border. Then we have all of our rows for the squares. Each of those is set to 35. Then another row of four for our border. And then the last one is auto. And again, you'll notice I made the reference to row eight and row one. So this row eight is actually row two and row one is actually row nine for our grid definition, for our grid definitions. Here's our columns. As I mentioned, we have asterisk on the first and last one. So it's equal spacing of everything horizontally. And then we have our row definition of for, with the width of four as is that very second to last one that's going to be part of our border and then columns for each of our squares. Column A is on the far left and column G is on the far right. I'm going to create a label, custom chessboard. I'm going to put that in row zero, grid.row zero and grid.column zero. I'm going to span that all 12 columns. And we'll center it and set the attributes. Then I have a box view, grid row one, grid column one, grid column span 10. And then I span the rows of 10 as well. So that's gonna give us a big black square. That's gonna be our border as well as underneath all of our chest squares. This one I'm gonna get rid of because I didn't actually use that. I was thinking about just shading the light squares and then have the dark squares on top. But I didn't do that. Uh, instead, I, I ended up setting each of these squares with, to an image button. So that comes next here. So row eight is at the top in our chessboard notation. So it's gonna, I named it BTN8A for that first square. I set it to blue and then set the second square to red, BTN8B and so forth down to B, BTN8H. I'm sorry, I think I said G was the last column. It should be H. Correct my notes up there. Gave it vertical options of fill, horizontal options of fill, and a corner radius of zero. By default, image button is going to have a little corner radius. I want to set that to zero so it's nice and square. And then I gave each of these a clicked event of square selected. And we could use that then down the road if we wanted to make this a little more interactive game where we could actually move the chess pieces. We can click a square and then click another square and move the piece to that target square. All I did was copy and paste for row seven, just change the names and change the, in this case, we're changing the grid row. You can leave the grid columns the same. Row six, change the grid row to four, rename all the buttons, all the image buttons. Do the same thing for five, for four, for three, for two, and for our row one, which is the bottom row of our chessboard. Looks like a lot of code, but again, it's just copy and paste and changing a few things. So again, notice that all of those have a clicked event of square selected. Then I have a stack layout that occurs in grid row 11, column zero. It's gonna span 12 columns. 
and I center that. I have a little label that says create new square and then a horizontal stack layout that's going to contain our RGB sliders and a swatch which is a border I named it swatch. It's going to be on the far left, gave it a height of 60 and 60, set the margins, give it a color of cyan, and then a vertical stack layout that's going to control going to contain the three horizontal stacks for each of the sliders, and each slider having a, a slider view and then a label at the end that's going to show what that value is. Um, and I used a font size of micro for that value, just very small. So we have our red slider named it SLDR red. We have our green slider, SDLR green, and our blue slider, SDL, SLDR blue. They're each a have a value of 0 to 255. Set the value of the red one to 0 and the green and blue to 255. And they have a width request of 256. So each unit is one of the ticks on the slider value. And our vertical stack layout and our horizontal stack layout. Then I have two horizontal stack layouts for our four buttons. First one having the set light button and the second one the set dark button. So I named those BTN set light, BTN set dark. Gave it clicked events of, of BTN set light underscore clicked and BTN set dark underscore clicked. And then our two buttons and another horizontal stack layout, BTN clear and BTN setup. So BTN clear will hide all the chess pieces, BTN setup will show all the chess pieces in the initial game setup. And then finally a label showing the copyright information uh, for myself. So again, just our clicked events we need to handle, setup pieces, clear pieces, BTN set dark clicked, BTN set light clicked, update color swatch for all of our three sliders. They all use the same uh, event handler. And then all of our image buttons have a square selected event that we need to handle. Let's take a look at the C-sharp code. So in C-sharp, I started with creating three arrays for our squares, one named dark squares, one light squares, one all squares. The first two contain 32 squares. The last one contains all 64. I also set integers of red value, green value, and blue value, and set those equal to what I put into the XAML. So red was zero, green value is 255, blue value is 255. Then we have our constructor. We can't populate those three arrays until the components have been initialized because at that point they don't exist. But once we initialize components, we can now create three temporary arrays of type image button and set the values to the names of our different image buttons. Then I used a for loop to copy those into our two class level arrays. So dark squares element I equals temp dark element I and light squares element I equals temp light element I. So going from zero to 31. Then I just simply to make sure it was working, I put in a change dark and change light, changing this, the chessboard to black and white. And I'm just gonna jump down so you can see those because those are at the bottom here. So there's my change dark, I'm passing it a color and I'm just going through all of the elements of our dark squares array and setting the background color to dark color. And then that's the value was passed. And then for the change light, doing the same thing, but here I'm referencing the elements of the light squares array and changing the background color to the past light color value. I'm gonna call a method called update color swatch. We'll look at it in a minute, but I'm passing it an object and I use the slider blue and passed it the value changed event arg dot empty. That forces that swatch to update. Didn't really need to do that. I was just experimenting there a little bit. Uh, it's already cyan, which is gonna be the value that ends up being. So I could actually comment that out. And everything would still work fine. Then we have another loop, this time going from zero to 63, using a variable called j. And I'm, I'm setting each element of all squares, element j, to temp all element j. So it's taking all of these references to the image buttons and putting those in our all squares array. And then I set the image button in each one of those 64 squares to the source of our transparent PNG. 
Doesn't make any difference in how things appear, but that might be useful down the road. We want to see if a square is open. We can test to see if its source contains transparent.png. Then here's our event handlers for setting the light button. So I'm simply going to again called change light, but I'm going to get the background color of a swatch and then for the dark background color of the swatch, calling the change dark, which you already looked at. And then here's where we're changing that swatch color based on the sliders for red, green, and blue. Getting those values, setting the labels at the end of each of those sliders, setting our swatch background color. I also set the swatch background to the same thing. The swatch background is really what shows up, but the swatch background color is what we refer to in the code. That's why I did both. Here's just a stub for the square selected. I'm not doing anything with that. We're not moving pieces at this point. So I just put a stub there since we've got to have something to handle that event. And then just some comments of how that might be used in the future. Here's our setup pieces button. We're going to create an array of image type image source called row one pieces. And that's going to be the white rook, the white knight, the white bishop, and so forth going across from column A to column H. And then doing the same thing for row eight, which is going to be our black pieces at the top. Black underscore rook, black underscore knight, black underscore bishop, and so forth. I'm going to clear the squares. In case down the road we move things, we want to reset the game. That's going to place all the squares having a source of transparent.png. Now let's place the square. So I just did a loop. Since there's eight pieces in each row, I did a loop from zero to seven. And then all squares element i dot source equals row eight pieces i. That's, that's going to be our top row, the first eight pieces there. Then I did the same thing for the pawns, which are on row seven. And I just simply took element i plus eight and did set the black pawn. I did i plus 48 for the element, setting the white pawn. This is going to be the row two at the second from the bottom. And then row one is going to be i plus 56, and setting the row one pieces, which will be our white rook, our white knight, and so forth. To clear the pieces, all I do is go through the 64 squares for each image button in all squares and set the source equal to transparent.png. That's the code. Again, I'm just going to run this. Let's run this on our iPhone this time. And so it's again, I can set the, maybe the light color that I want, set light. Let's do a much darker green for the dark, show the pieces, or clear the board. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.